Welcome back to Press Review. Let's start by taking a look at today's front pages in the Middle East. Starting in Israel, where Jerusalem Post leads its front page, reporting that Israel will not release a fourth batch of 26 Palestinian security prisoners on Saturday, as stipulated under the framework deal that led to the renewal of negotiations last July. The paper also reports that the vast majority of Israelis polled in a recent study think that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has the best understanding of the complexities of the US-Israel relationship. The UAE's Gulf News leads reporting that the Philippines and its largest Muslim rebel group, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, have signed a peace deal ending about 45 years of conflict that has killed more than 120,000 people in the country's south. The paper also reports that pro-military Egyptian, Egyptians poured into the street in jubilation following a TV announcement by Abdel Fattah al-Sisi that he has quit his post as defence minister to run for the presidency. From Saudi Arabia, the Arab News reports that the kingdom's second deputy premier, Prince Mukrin Bil Abdulaziz, has been named deputy crown prince, thus being second in line to succeed the king. The paper also reports that King Abdullah is due to hold key talks with US President Barack Obama, with strained relations between the two countries and the rising spectre of terrorism in the region to top the agenda. From Lebanon, the Daily Star leads reporting that one policeman has been shot and killed by masked gunmen in Tripoli, North Lebanon, as another man is rushed to the hospital after being stabbed by an unknown assailant. The paper also reports that Moscow says Switzerland has imposed restrictions on military exports to Russia over events in Ukraine, which are counterproductive and not in line with the country's policy of neutrality. Egypt Independent leads reporting that the cabinet has decided to demolish the building of Mubarak's National Democratic Party and annex the premise of the Garden of the Egyptian Museum in accordance with Article 49 of the 2014 Constitution that obliges the state to preserve artefacts. The paper also reports that dozens of US lawmakers have urged President Barack Obama to publicly address Saudi Arabia's systematic human rights violations when he visits the kingdom today. Now let's look at the top Middle East news from UK papers. The Independent leads its Middle East section reporting that the Middle East peace process appeared to be slipping into an even more critical condition after Israel delayed its fourth and final tranche of agreed prisoner release that have been long awaited by Palestinians. Just hours after a crucial meeting between US Secretary of State John Kerry and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas raised hopes that all was not lost, Israel announced that the release, which was supposed to take place tomorrow, would be postponed. The Guardian leads its Middle East section reporting that US President Barack Obama is due to arrive in Riyadh today seeking rapprochement with an aggrieved Arab ally whose interests are increasingly at odds with its key Western backer. The paper says that Obama's main message to his hosts will be that he is not neglecting them and insists that no other country in the region can replace the US as a security guarantor. And the Telegraph leads its Middle East section reporting that Syria is launching a new airline planning to fly to destinations across the Middle East and further afield, despite the ongoing civil war in the country. Kinder Airlines, a private company, is planning to launch its fleet in May, flying out of Damascus International Airport and the coastal city of Latakia, whose province has seen intensive fighting in recent days. Now let's take a look at the top Middle East news in today's international papers. The Los Angeles Times leads its Middle East section reporting that as the Syrian civil war enters its fourth year, the rebels are clearly losing. The paper says unlikely as it once seemed and as unpalatable as it may be to US policymakers and their allies, President Assad could well end up the sole Middle East leader to remain in power after coming under threat from the so-called Arab Spring revolts. And finally, China's Global Times reports that a dangerous terrorist has been shot dead in gunfire with Lebanese soldiers in the eastern Bekar town of Arsal. Sami al atrash was wanted by Lebanese security forces for preparing car bombs, firing rockets and mortars and kidnapping citizens. And for more updates, please visit Levant.tv. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us again on Monday. Bye for now.